bias binders are a very unique attachment for sergers. You can actually take strips of fabric and have it fold the strip for you and you sew it on with a cover hem stitch. They come in a couple of different varieties or types, whatever you want to use, and they come in different sizes. I have two of them here that are really two of the most common sizes that we use. And it depends on the machine and the brand of machine is how they actually fold the fabric and how they attach the machine. But the ones that we're going to use, this one is called a single fold bias binder and it puts on a piece of bias that's 28 millimeters. This one's called a double fold bias binder and it puts on a 36 millimeter piece of bias. And they're attached to the machine with these two little screws. Now they look very much the same when you look at them. I mean, it's like, how do I tell them apart? Well, when you turn this one up, you can see in the bottom of it that it has a C on the top and it's straight down here on the bottom edge. This means it only folds the top of the bias and the bottom layer of the bias is straight. This is the one we're going to use in our demonstration. This one, when you look at it, you can see that it's different underneath there. The bias part is actually a big C. See the difference there? And look at this one in comparison. So that's how you tell the difference. Also, each one of them is marked as to the size of bias that it is. And that's sometimes a little bit harder to see. Right here, this one says it's 28 millimeters. And on this one, it says it's 36 millimeters. So always look at the size here. Don't try to figure out what size it is by looking at the end of the attachment itself. We're gonna use these to put bias on the straight edge of fabric, and we're also going to do a curve in the segment. In this part of the lesson, we're going to work with actually applying the bias. You're going to do a straight edge and you're also going to do a curved edge. And I'm just going to point out a few things to watch for when you first start. And it depends on how you want your finished look. I started this one with one needle on the bias and one needle on the fabric. As I came down, I adjusted the binder until I ended up with both needles on the bias. This is a totally personal preference choice right here. You can do it either way you want. Over here on the curve, you can see that I hit the curve going all the way around on the bias. But what can happen whenever you're doing the bias binder, it is a little different technique for doing curves than it is doing these straight edges right here. Look at this one. When I started around the curve, I immediately fell off and then I came back on. That's very common to have happen when you first use these binders. But just to show you, that it can be done in a curve. I'm on the bias here all the way around and I will show you that technique. This one was done with a single fold bias binder so that when you are finished, this is what your bias looks like right here. You can see that little flap of extra fabric. Then you take a nice pair of sharp little scissors and you trim that excess piece of bias off. So that's why this is called single fold. It does not tuck that bottom edge underneath. Bias does not ravel even though it's a woven fabric, so this can be trimmed nice and close. I prefer this one to necklines over the double fold because I, I eliminate an extra fold of fabric underneath there. All machines that have cover hem capabilities will have ways for you to adjust the tension on both your looper thread and your needle threads. It'll be a dial just like a tension dial on a sewing machine. On this side of the machine is where the tension dial is that controls the tension on the threads that go through the cover hem needles. You can see that we're using our needles in a front position instead of a back position. The front position is for cover hem. The back position back here is for overlock. This is a clear foot that allows you to see through the foot to see your cover hem stitches approaching the needles. This machine has a capability of sewing the cover hem stitch with three needles. Right now, we're only going to use two. The little attachment itself fits right on what this is called is a fabric table. I just call it a flatbed attachment, but technically it's a fabric table or a sewing table. Uh, over here are some adjustments on the attachment right here. You can see that if you need to, you can take these two screws out and adjust these two pieces either closer or farther apart. There's also two screws right here in the little flatbed table. Those have threaded screw holders in the end down there that the screws go down into. When you put this on, you might think, oh gee, I'm just gonna use one screw. You really need to use both screws. If you just put one screw in there and tighten it down, this has a tendency to wanna to turn like this. If you put both screws in there, 
it makes it so that it doesn't turn. It won't turn this way, but it'll still slide back and forth this direction for adjustment in front of the foot. First thing that you need to do is align the bias binder to line up with the needle marks on the toe of the presser foot. This particular company has a needle mark on the toe of the foot for every needle that goes into the machine. You have three needles on the cover hem. There's one, two, three, and you have two needles in the back for the two overlocks. The cover hem needles we have in the machine right now are number two and number three. There is no needle in the number one position. So the front of the binder, right here is where the binding is going to go through. You have to line it up as close as what you can, and remember, you need to make a practice sample. Don't expect it to be absolutely correct the first time you do it. That's why these screws are here, so that you can loosen them and you can fine tune the position of where that binder is. So we're going to set it up to where I think it's fairly close, and you tighten these screws down to hold the binder into position. The next step we're going to do is to actually get the binding into the attachment and get the fabric into the binder. When you first load your bias in there, take in consideration the width of your bias. The instructions that come with the bias binder will suggest to you the right width to cut your bias piece. It literally has to fit right here into this little tunnel. It needs to be exactly that size. Now, it says an inch and an eighth for this particular type of fabric, but if you're going to use a heavier fabric or maybe a thinner fabric or a stretchy fabric, you may have to vary that width a little larger or a little smaller. So always make a sample. Don't assume that every fabric is going to react the same. I like to cut a little wedge like this, like an arrow on the uh, front of the bias because when we poke it in here we have to feed it through this curled action part of the binder and it goes through much easier if you don't have the sharp corners out here the angled corners we need them like this so put your bias in there just feed it right in and see it fits right in that little slot and then see right here this is a little I call this a little pusher slider you can just take your tweezers or a straight pin or anything and see I'm just working it through see it coming out down here See it curling here? There it comes. See it coming out underneath? Once you get it coming out, then you lift up the toe of the foot, and I take my tweezers and I pull the bias underneath the foot. Now look straight down there at the foot and you'll see that this clear foot will show you exactly where your bias is going. And you kind of line it up at this point. And see, I've, I can see where my needles are gonna hit it. I'm pretty close. As we start to sew, we may still need to adjust this position over here by loosening the screws and moving the binder. Okay, to begin, there is a special way you put your fabric in. You have to be sure that the edge of your fabric rubs, rubs right there against the edge of that little piece of the binder. You put it in, your presser foot's up, you put it in and push the fabric all the way back to the needles and I'm inside the binding. See how I'm nice and smooth right here? And I'm inside the binding. Then you lower the foot down, bring your needles down to see where they're going into the binding. And I look pretty good right there, but you still may need to loosen these screws after you do your practice sample and move it one way or the other. Okay, now look closely down there. See this needle and this thread? See how it's not quite on the fabric there? So this is where you loosen these screws and make sure your needles are up. You can't adjust this with the needles in the fabric and just slightly move that over, ever so slightly. Tighten this back down and then we're gonna continue to sew. Now remember, I moved it up here. So it's gonna take it just about that length right there before it gets into the place where I moved it. So give it a little chance to get over there before you stop. There it's starting to creep over a little bit. Now it's getting on it. See the difference? Now the needle is on it. As you go, as you're sewing through it, make sure you keep your fabric up there. And see the curl? The curl on the bias is curling it right through the little bias binder. As it feeds through, see how beautiful it comes out in the back? All your stitches are beautiful and nice and even. Just go right on through and right out the back. 